Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Good cup of coffee, the Word of God, 1 Kings chapter 18. Yesterday, we left Elijah on Mount Carmel, about to face off with the prophets of Baal, who have spent all day clamoring, cheering, worshiping, singing, dancing around an altar, even cutting themselves until the blood gushed everywhere to try to impress Baal, to get him to answer by fire. Nothing's happened. Things have gotten really bad in Israel, so bad, in fact, that horses, cattle, sheep, people are all dying. Things are not going well in the kingdom. The famine is severe because there hasn't been a drop of rain for three years. But Elijah has come to demonstrate something, that the God of rain, the real God of fertility, the real God you should be worshiping, is not Baal, who is just Satan in disguise, but the Lord, he is God. As we see this contest continue, of course, yesterday we saw how nothing happened when the prophets of Baal tried to impress their faults, God. But in verse number 30, we pick up this morning when it says, Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near me. So all the people approached him. And then he repaired the Lord's altar that had been torn down. Apparently, on Mount Carmel, there had been an altar to the Lord, but it had been neglected. It had been torn down says something, doesn't it? Matter of fact, hang on, we're going to come back and look at this after we read the entire story. He repaired the Lord's altar that had been torn down, and then Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel will be your name. And he built an altar with the stones in the name of the Lord. And then he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold about four gallons. Next, he arranged the wood, cut up the bull, and placed it on the wood. He said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the offering to be burned and on the wood. Now, I want you to remember something here. Water was a precious commodity in these days. Of course, they brought water out there because the people were gathering and there had to be water for them and for their animals to bring that water meant that they really had to go to some lengths. Water was rare. It was precious. Now watch what Elijah is going to ask them to do. Pour the water on the wood, on the burnt offering? Okay. Then he said in verse 34, a second time. And they did it a second time. Then he said a third time. They did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar it even filled the trench with water. Now at the time for the offering of the evening sacrifice, the prophet Elijah then approached the altar drenched in water. This stuff's not going to burn, is it? It's soaking wet. He's made it absolutely evident that there's no secret little firecracker down in there somewhere that's going to set off this offering. He wanted everybody to know that this fire has got to come from heaven. It's got to be a pretty powerful fire to light up this offering. So he prayed, and here's what he said. You ready? Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, that at your word I have done all these things. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that this people will know that you, the Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the Lord's fire fell, and it consumed the burnt offering, the wood, and the stones, and the dust. It licked up the water that was in the trench. <laughs> yeah, this was no ordinary fire, was it? When all the prophets saw it, they fell face down. When all the people saw it, excuse me. When all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Now, there's something interesting about how this has been laid out, and I think it gives a pattern for exactly what's going to happen if we want the fire of God's revival to actually fall. In the New Testament, we're told that we, his servants, his prophets, must present ourselves in, in honor of him as our reasonable act of worship as living sacrifices. That's the way Paul puts it in Romans chapter 12. Present yourselves before the Lord as a living sacrifice. It's our reasonable act of worship, he says. 
But when you present yourself, you're not going to be worth anything to anybody unless you are drenched in something. The Bible talks about the Word of God being like water. It talks about the washing of water through the Word. And if you and I are actually going to make a difference in this society that has so turned its back on God and is now worshiping Baal, we've got to be drenched in his word. We've got to be covered in it. We've got to know it from the inside out. We've got to be like the psalmist who said, Lord, your word I've hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against you. We've got to be those who cherish it above all else. And when that happens, and only when that happens, and we are at our worst, and society has collapsed in on itself, and it looks ugly from both inside and outside, and we are so broken, we're ready to turn back to the Lord, then, because of the activity of God's servants who are surrendered to him, then and only then can the fire of the Lord fall. Oh, friends, it was an interesting time. I wish I could go back in a time machine and watch this take place on Mount Carmel. Watch the fire of the Lord fall. And all of a sudden, everything changed in Israel. The revival would come now because God had answered by fire. I think God is still the same God, and he's ready to answer our prayers and our pleas when we get ready for it, when we actually believe him, when we actually saturate ourselves in God's word and humbly seek his face. That's kind of what it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. When my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. Then I'll answer. This is what God is saying. Then I'll heal their land, not before. Those of us who are looking for God to solve these problems that seem to be exploding all around us and keep waiting for God to do something have missed the point. If we who say we know him are not preparing ourselves to be used by him in this time, then we can't expect God with his own people paying no attention. We can't expect God to act. Instead, he will let us and our nation die wallowing the filth of its own sin. That's not good news today, but the good news is I believe in a God who still answers, and he will answer with the fires of revival when you and I prepare ourselves accordingly. God bless you. You have a great day in the Lord. I'll see you again tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day 2022. I will see you again right here as we wake up in God's word. God bless you.